we organize and turn our protest into political power, we can change this world. And now surely the time to do that. We are on a knife's edge in this country between freedom and authoritarian, hate-filled, even violent rule. So many of our freedoms are at stake. The freedom to vote, the freedom to have our elections reflect the popular vote, the freedom to thrive and reproductive freedom. Reproductive freedom is the most intimate decision of a person's life. It's about when or whether or with whom we have a child. And no politician should get between a woman and her doctor about this decision. About 70% of this country agrees with that position. The Pew Center says that the overwhelming majority of Virginians think that abortion should be legal in most cases. And yet it's a key issue on that knife's edge in Virginia. Unless we get out every single vote who supports our position, Virginia is the last state in the South, other than Washington, D.C., which we hope soon becomes a state. Virginia is the last current state in the South where women have full reproductive rights because you organized and because elected officials voted to protect this freedom. But since the Dobbs Supreme Court decision in June overturning Roe, 21 states have either banned abortion or limited it so severely as to make it unattainable by most people who seek that help. There's now a new 20 week ban in North Carolina with mandatory waiting appointments and the Supreme Court is reviewing that decision in the state. Patients from Georgia and beyond come to Virginia seeking help. The Florida Supreme Court may allow a six week ban before many women even know that they're pregnant. We need a pro-reproductive freedom majority in the Commonwealth, in the House of Delegates, in the State Senate, and nationally. And what do these bans mean? In Texas, four women sued the state because while they so wanted children, they each had catastrophic medical problems that meant their fetus wouldn't survive and they might die without a DNC, which is the medical term for an abortion. But they were told they had to wait until their own lives were threatened and medical sepsis or infection set in before they could get the procedure. I heard stories like this of desperate women before Roe. In 1965, I was in college. I had just returned from working in Mississippi during the 1964 Mississippi Freedom Summer Project when Northern students were recruited to support courageous black Mississippians in their effort to vote. While there was terror and right-wing opposition, and most of you have heard the story of the three young volunteers, Andrew Goodman, James Cheney, and Michael Schwerner, who were killed at the hands of the Klan. But because we organized, within a year, we won a Voting Rights Act. When we organize, we have changed the world, even against enormous odds. And then in 1965, a friend of mine on campus approached me to say his sister was pregnant and nearly suicidal and not ready to have a child and asked, could I find someone to help provide an abortion? I found a doctor through the medical arm of the civil rights movement. By the way, his name was TRM Howard, an extraordinary person who I learned only much later had been a civil rights champion in Mississippi when he had called for the investigation of the murder of Emmett Till. And then his name was put on a Klan death list and he came to Chicago where I was at the time. He provided the procedure and I thought I had done one good deed and that was the end of it. But word spread and someone else called. I arranged for that abortion and word spread and someone else called. And I realized I needed to set up a system. So I recruited other women to be part of it. But because three people talking about providing an abortion in Chicago in 1965 was a conspiracy to commit a felony, 
we called it Jane. And we'd advertise and say, pregnant, don't want to be, call Jane. Over time, with the demand growing, the women of Jane learned how to do the procedures themselves. And the women of Jane performed over 11,000 abortions before Roe. There's a wonderful documentary about this that came out last year that you can see on HBO called The James. By the way, it just won three Emmys. And a Hollywood version with Sigourney Weaver uh, and Elizabeth Banks that she produced called uh, The James. Oh, no, I'm sorry, called Call Jane is the Hollywood version. Uh, the documentary shows there were septic abortion wards in the city hospitals and every week women were dying because there was no legal abortion. And so they either did injury to themselves or found someone else who wasn't skilled or wasn't trustworthy and injured them. The women weren't able to have full participation in the society. They weren't often not able to work or care for their child. And by the way, a majority of the people who have abortions already have children. They know what's involved in raising a child. And before Roe, women were denied options, often to have an education or reduced to poverty and diminished options in life. And most women know that this is a precious freedom and one that needs to be protected. All this is at risk, unless we organize and turn our protest in political power. Then we won't go back to those septic abortion wards. We shouldn't go back to the days of Jane and an abortion underground. Virginia, you can do and the, make the future possible for people. You can provide hope. You can provide the victory that we need. Andrea Miller in Center for Common Ground is an important part of that hope. She has been a movement partner for so many years. You couldn't have better partners. We now need from you four Ms, the letter M. The first M, members. We need you to recruit others, make calls, do the text, do the work, canvas, get out the vote, sign up now. You showed you can recruit the funding, recruit members, how many people, what's the name of the person you'll recruit? Is it your mother, is it your daughter, is it your father, is it your friend? We need more people. The second M, message. How will you spread the word? You're doing it tonight in social media, in the substacks, what Robert Hubble does what our wonderful actress Sedgwick does, uh, what each of the friends do on this call, with each of you, Jessica, that you do every day. We need money. We need you to give, just as you did tonight, $10,000. Let's increase that number. We can get double that. Andrea knows that. And movement. We need to show up. Members, message, money, movement. And when we've organized in the past, we have changed the world. And if we organize now and turn our protests to electoral power, we will change this world. And I hope to celebrate our future victories together with all of you.